Her single banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars Ladies and gentlemen, Meredith Smithy. record. Lancaster Baptist School and the CIF require good sportsmanship and positive behavior of student athletes, cheerleaders, band members, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation in supporting the student athletes and officials in a positive manner. Please be mindful of your language and actions at all times, and treat others with dignity and respect. Profanity directed at athletes, officials, team representatives, or other spectators will not be tolerated in our grounds for immediate removal from the school premises. We appreciate your cooperation in creating a safe and positive game environment.
the Eagles and the Knights are scoreless with nine minutes to play in the first quarter. A big third and six early in this ball game here. Balcorda and Bakewell in the backfield. Snap to Balcorda. He rolls to his right, throws. It's caught by Justin Green. Justin Green picks up the first down. That's good for a Knights first down all the way down inside the red zone. Beautiful rollout by Balcorda. Alcorta fumbled the snap. Bakewell picks it up. Bakewell returns just beyond the line of scrimmage. Small gain for the Knights on first down. Three yards on the play. It's second and seven from the 15. Desert Christian on the drive. Started with a turnover at midfield. Fumbled snap by the Eagles. Gave it to the Knights. Second and seven from the 15. Knights driving, trying to punch in first. Eight minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first. Great crowd, beautiful evening here in Lancaster, California. 70 degrees. Bakewell on the carry. Bakewell takes it around the left side. Another minimal gain for the Knights. Or bring Knights. up third and short. Taken down by JJ Schofield. Looks like third and two for the Knights with eight minutes to play here and in the first. It's third down. Eagles with a 5-1 and one record, Knights with a 2-4 and four record. Knights coached by Coach Aaron Williams, Eagles coached by Coach John Alvarez. Here comes the third and two. Valcorta gives it to Bakewell. Bakewell looks like he's going to have enough for the first. Drags a few care, uh, tacklers. Signal is first down, Knights. Knights have moved inside the 10 yard line. Looks like it's spotted on the eight, first and goal from the eight. First and goal from the eight yard line. Would be a big early score for the Knights. 7.15 to play here in the first. It's first and goal. Francisco Balcorda. Noah Bakewell in the backfield. Snap to Balcorda. He rolls right. He scrambles. Balcorda. Still on his feet, he's taken down in the backfield by number 20, Sammy, Sammy Flores. Sack results in a loss on the play. Ball looks like it's spotted just outside the 10 yard line at the 11. It'll be second and goal from the 11. It's the first negative yardage the Knights have faced on this drive. JJ Cofield was in the backfield there. Host of Eagles in on the play. Just a perfect night in Lancaster, California. Not a whisper of wind. Second and goal for the first time all night. The, the Knights have three split out. Valcorda drops back, throws. He's got number five. Steven Weiser, what a catch. What a throw by the Knights. Gives the Knights a 6-0 lead with that touchdown. Beautiful connection from Valcorda to Weiser on that second and goal, gives the Knights the early lead. Offensive line of the Knights did a great job holding up there. Extra point attempt will be attempted by CJ Tuning. Holder is number five, Steven Weiser. Snap is down, kick is up. It's good. Great execution by the Knights, and they have an early 7-0 lead with 6.09 left to play in the first quarter. It's a big early momentum for the Knights. The turnover at midfield leads to points. All available at the concession stand. All proceeds go to LDS Athletics.
I'm joined by Tiffany tonight in the booth. Tiffany, what are your early thoughts here at Tony Brown Memorial Field? Oh, it's so interesting to see the dynamic of all these players. Definitely going into an eight-man game instead of an 11-man game. It's interesting to see how they play, but it's also awesome to see how hungry these young men are to get some points on the board. Starting off strong and uh, eager to see how much they push through in the future. Speaking of hungry, Tiffany, the concession stand is in view, and it looks and smells good over there. I don't know if that's making its way through the screens to the folks at home, but it's a perfect night out here at Lancaster Baptist. Kickoff by C.J. Tunings looks deep, and it's in the end zone for a touchback. Oh, no. Wow. Did not go into the end zone. It looked like it was. The Eagles stepped out out of, out of bounds at the one-yard line. Huge play there. Tiffany, that was interesting. Yeah. Looked like it was headed into the end zone and kind of stopped, died right there at the one-yard line. A huge break for the Knights and a tough break for the Eagles. The Eagles facing a little bit of adversity tonight. The turnover on their first possession. Tough field position here on the second. We'll see how they respond. Quite a unique play. Peyton Langley in the backfield, joined by Sammy Flores and Marcos de Paula Rosa. Langley takes the snap. It's a keeper. Langley gets it out of the end zone, but not much more. Fortunate to avoid a safety there. Looks like a little bit of miscommunication in the backfield. Huge chance for the Knights here to either pick up some points with a safety or force the Eagles to punt out of the own, uh, own end zone. It's going to be second and nine from the two here. Peyton Langley, the quarterback, his brother Wyatt Langley, recovering from an injury, leading to Peyton being inserted into the starting lineup. We've got Emilio Patterson joined in the backfield as well with Langley. Direct snap to Patterson. He hands it off to, uh, to Flores. Flores around the end. He's got the first. Sammy Flores still on his feet. Sammy Flores with a huge 30-yard gain all the way out to the 31-yard line. Tiffany, exactly what the doctor ordered for the Eagles there. Yeah, exactly what they ordered. Came down strong. Eagles get it out of danger zone there. A lot of breathing room now. Great play design there by Coach John Alvarez. It was a direct snap to the back. Number 33, Emilio Patterson. Coming around the outside on a reverse was number 20, Sammy Flores. Great execution by the Eagles and great blocking around the left side. Langley in the backfield, joined by Patterson. Flores in motion. Snap is to Langley. Langley hands it off to Patterson. Patterson picks up yardage, loses his footing. But it's going to be a positive gain. Looks like about a gain of six for the Eagles. Brings up second and four right near midfield. They... He lost his footing there, but the team as a whole seems to be gaining their footing as the Eagles have moved the ball to the 38-yard line, approaching midfield. 4.28 to play in our first quarter. Looks like it's spotted actually about second and five. Langley in the backfield. Patterson joins, or, or Flores joins him. Snap to Langley. Hands off to Flores, and he slips in the backfield as well. This time it'll be a slight loss on the play. This is right around the same spot where the Eagles turned it over on their first drive tonight. Just a reminder, folks, and thanks for tuning in. Whether you're watching on Facebook Live, on Channel 28, or on YouTube, the Eagles are in all blue tonight. The Lancaster Baptist School in all blue. The Knights are in the white pants and the multicolored white and blue jerseys. Blue helmets for the Knights, white helmets for the Eagles. This big third down play. Samuel Flores in motion. Peyton Langley drops back. Langley's got pressure. What a pitch by Langley. Beautiful play. Emilio Patterson's on his feet. Patterson's got the first down and more. Huge play. What a pitch by Peyton Langley. Huge third down pickup by the Eagles. Ball's going to be all the way down to the Desert Christian 21-yard line. What a unique play by Langley. Didn't have the angle or the arm slot to release it with his normal release, just kind of pitched it like an option pitch forward 
and a great run from there by Emilio Patterson. Huge play for the Eagles early on in this game. 3:05 to play. Eagles have first and ten. They're on their own. They're on the uh, Knights' 21-yard line. Langley in the backfield. Patterson and Flores split wide. We've got uh, Patterson in motion. Reverse around the other side to Flores. He's got lots of room. Sammy Flores on his feet. Touchdown, Sammy Flores. On a drive that started on their own one yard line, the Eagles take it the distance. Sammy Flores and Emilio Patterson doing a lot of damage on that drive. Eagles have a chance to tie it up here with the PAT with just 2.49 left to play in the first. Great game, great environment, beautiful evening in Lancaster. So the Eagles face some early adversity, but respond in a great way. Chance to tie it up. Holder will be Flores, who just scored the touchdown. Extra point attempt is by Ethan Cox. Oh, and it's a little bit of a tough snap. Flores takes it on the run, and he's in. Two-point conversion, Sammy Flores. Snap was high, and that forced, forced Flores to roll to his right. He had enough room to sneak it inside the pylon and give the Eagles the lead. It's 8-7 to seven here at Tony Brown Memorial Field. Lancaster Baptist leads Desert Christian with 2.49 to play in the first quarter. Eric, for our listeners that are tuning in and aren't aware of the differences, differences between 11-man football and 8-man football, can you give some quick hits on what the differences are? Yeah, great great point, Tiffany. Well, it starts really at the line of scrimmage. Most plays you're going to see fewer offensive linemen. In a traditional 11-man game, there's very rarely going to be a time where there's not five offensive linemen in set position, maybe a few backs and a few receivers split out. And in uh, 8-man football, a lot more uh, room to move because of the fewer players on the field. You see usually a lot more scoring and uh, a few more, uh, a few less linemen, I should say, on the line of scrimmage. Awesome. Once again, our score is 8-7. to seven. Lancaster Baptist in the all-blue and white helmets leads Desert Christian. Kickoff here by Ethan Cox is a line drive. Looks like it's going to go all the way out of the end zone. Ethan Cox's kickoff goes out of the end zone for a touchback. Desert Christian will start on their own 15. You mentioned the difference between 11 and 8. Man, that's a big one right there. They start on the 15. We've got an 80-yard field. You may be wondering when I'm saying ball near midfield at the 38, what that means. The 40-yard line is midfield on the 8-man field. So there's some more differences as well. I also see a lot of players interchanging their positions as well. That's exactly right. You're going to see a lot of players play both ways tonight. Uh, for example, uh, Flores and Langley, who you just saw there on offense, you're going to see a lot on defense. Same with the uh, crew from Desert Christian. A lot of guys playing both ways and special teams. Mm -hmm. Conditioning does really come into play in the second half. All right, so Lancaster Baptist responded to some early adversity. We'll see how the Knights of Desert Christian respond. They trail by just one. Quarterback Francisco Balcorta in the backfield, along with number 42 running back Noah Bakewell. Split out right, number five, Steven Weiser. In motion, here's number 18, Justin Green. Balcorta keeps it. He's not going to pick up much. He's taken down by number 20, Balcourt Sammy Flores, Green. and number seven, Marcos Tavalarosa. He's actually going to lose a yard on the play. It's going to bring up second and 11 here. So Flores, who scored the touchdown, the two-point conversion, picks up where he left off with the, with the tackle here. Tackle for loss on the play, second and 11 for the Knights. Coach Aaron Williams has given the play to Francisco Balcorda. He's communicating with his team in the huddle. He's calling for an extra lineman. A late substitution here by Desert Christian. We'll see if they're able to get this play off in time. They're still in the huddle. Eagles are 5-1, and one, Desert Christian 2-4. and four. Eagles led by Coach Aaron Williams. At, excuse me, Knights led by Coach Aaron Will Williams. Eagles led by Coach John Alvarez. Okay, we've got three... Three split out here for the Knights. No back in the backfield. We'll see if they put it in the air here. Valcorta drops back to pass. Valcorta's pressured. He's taken down in the backfield. Number 17, Austin Yarbrough with the big sack for the loss. Looks like a loss of seven on the play. Austin Yarbrough, the junior. Loss of four yards on the play. And it's third down. Yarbrough was at defensive end there. Quickly got the pressure, no back there in the backfield to pick it up. And 
Tiffany, we've got a big third and long here early in this football game. Yeah, the tension's pretty tight in this field. Even though there's only 80 yards on the field, it doesn't make a difference on the tension. It's a third and long, third and 16 here with just about a minute to play. You would think the Knights would put it in the air. They're joined in the backfield. Number seven, Andrew Silva. Actually, he splits out. We've got four split out. Henderson, Green, Silva, and Weiser split out. Just three linemen and one quarterback. We'll see if the Eagles send pressure if they sit back. Snap to Balcorda. He rolls right. He's pressured again by Yarbrough. J.J. Cofield as well. He takes off, though. Balcorda's got a chance to pick up the first down, and he's taken down by Sammy Flores just short of the third down. A great play by Balcorda, but it will bring up fourth and short here. He was forced right again by the pressure of Austin Yarbrough and J.J. Cofield, but eluded the pressure, picked up about 13 on the play, Tiffany, and we've got fourth down here late in this first quarter. The Knights are lining up in punt formation. We'll see if they snap it before the end of the quarter. Just 10 seconds remaining in the quarter. C.J. Tuning is the punter for the Knights, and he's kicked it well on kickoffs already tonight. Tuning gets it off right before the quarter ends. It's a high punt. That'll go out of bounds at the Eagles 32. So the Knights do elect to punt it away. That ends the first quarter here at Tony Brown Memorial Field. We've got a good one. Eagles lead the Knights eight to seven. It'll be Eagles ball coming out of the second quarter, starting on their own 32 yard line. It's a perfect night in Lancaster, California. A rare night with no wind in the valley. And we're thankful that you're joining us here tonight. Whether you're watching from Lancaster, east side, west side, if you're cheering for the Knights or the Eagles, thanks for tuning in to tonight's broadcast. We're delighted to have you alongside of us. It's a fantastic football game so far. Coach Alvarez and Coach Williams are both in the huddle with their teams, and they're looking to build on some momentum in the first quarter. Both teams facing adversity and both teams responding well so far. Eric shared with us earlier that on an eight-man field, typically individuals are going to have to switch and interact with their positions, go on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. And we've been able to see with Lancaster Baptist that they have strong young men playing on both sides of the ball. That um, conditioning and that strengthening that happens at practice, they're built into becoming great, um, agility and, and strong athletes that are versatile to do whatever the coach desires them to do in tonight's match. Absolutely, Tiffany. And a storyline to follow is can they keep that up, right? We're, we're one quarter in. We'll see if that can be maintained for four. All right, we're ready for live action here. We've switched sides of the field. Peyton Langley's under center. Marcos DePaula Rosa at fullback and Sammy Flores at halfback. Oh, it's an option play. Langley pitches it to Sammy Flores, and he's got a great block out in front. He's going to pick up the first. He's brought down by number 18, Justin Green, but he picks up the first. A nice little pitch play there. Langley went under center, a little triple option action. Faked it to DePaula Rosa and then pitched it to Flores. Great play designed by the Eagles coming out of the, out of the break. So it's going to be first and 10 for the Eagles on the Knights 34 yard line. Langley's in shotgun. He's got a back split both ways, Flores and DePaula Rosa. Flores is in motion, he motions into the backfield. Look, handoff is to Flores, Flores around the left side. Flores has got another first down. Flores is still on his feet. He's dragging, dragging tacklers all the way down to the 10 yard line. Steven Weiser brings him down at the 10 yard line, but Sammy Flores is really starting to take control of this game, Tiffany. Flores was instrumental in the Eagles' drive that went the length of the field just one drive ago, and he's picked up where he left off. He's making plays on defense and offense tonight. Eagles will have first and goal just inside the 10-yard line. Langley's joined in the backfield by Flores. Snap from Michael Averbeck goes directly to Peyton Langley. Great play by the Knights there. Number 72, Jimmy Saracusa takes down Peyton Langley in the backfield. It's going to be a loss of at least one, maybe two on the play. Eagles offensive line has been doing a great job tonight, but that time Saracusa got in the backfield and wreaked havoc. Saracusa at nose guard broke through the center of the 
Eagles offensive line and took down Langley for a loss. We're still second and goal. This looks like it's from the 11. Langley joined by Flores in the backfield. Marcos DePaulo Rosa in motion, number seven. Langley hands it off on a reverse to DePaulo Rosa. He's got space, and Marcos DePaulo Rosa is going to cruise into the end zone. Fantastic lead blocking by Isaiah Kalika and Austin Yarbrough cleared the path on another beautifully designed play. DePaulo Rosa was in motion right, came back left, and waltzed into the end zone for an easy score. That brings our score to 14-7 to here at Tony Brown Memorial Field with 10-18 left to play in the second quarter. The Eagles have a chance to extend the lead to eight here on the extra point try. Snap. Once again, it's a fake. Sammy Flores' pass intended for Austin Yarbrough is incomplete. So it'll be 14 to seven. Eagles Our lead by seven. Tiffany, the Eagles have been pretty automatic on extra points this year, but for whatever reason, these first two, they've elected to try a little trickery. It worked the first time, but not the second. Yeah, I think they're really trying to make sure that they keep the points above on the board tonight. And uh, so far they're doing well. Unfortunately, that last one was incomplete, but I think they can keep trucking through for the rest of the evening. Absolutely. And Sammy Flores has been instrumental. Marcos de Paula Rosa just scored that last one. It'll be Ethan Cox kicking off here for the Eagles. Once again, the Eagles in all blue, white helmets. Both teams with beautiful uniforms. Knights of Desert Christian with the white pants and the multicolored jerseys, white and blue, with the black helmets, DC on the side. Cox will be kicking off here to number five, Steven Weiser, who's already found his way into the end zone once tonight. We'll see if he can do it again. Not this time because Cox's kickoff goes into the end zone again. Beautiful kick by Ethan Cox. It's a touchback, and once again, the Knights will take over on their own 15-yard line. Thanks for hanging with us through some technical difficulties. Hopefully you're able to hear us at Tony Brown Memorial Field tonight. It'll be the Knights ball on their own 15. Eagles lead 14 to seven. Knights scored first. Knights punched first with a 7-0 lead, but the Eagles have responded, Tiffany, with 14 straight. We'll see if the Knights respond now. Valcorta takes the handoff and gives it to Bakewell. He breaks the first tackler. He drags a couple more. That's going to be a gain of about four. Great part yet again. Uh, Lancaster Baptist continues to have strong defense uh, and keep pushing back tonight. Tonight, Absolutely. Bakewell's been effective at times, but the, the Eagles have done a really good job on the last few drives of bottling up Bakewell with short yardage gains. We mentioned earlier some guys play in both ways, and that's certainly the case. We've got Flores and Napala Rosa. Cox and Averbeck playing both ways for the Eagles and a host of Knights doing the same. Valcourt is joined in the backfield by Bakewell. Bakewell takes the carry again. Bakewell picks up a nice gain. That's going to get him close to a first down. We'll see where they spot it. Just seeing that jump back and forth on both sides of the ball. Some people think eight-man football may be limiting, but if anything, I might register my future son into eight-man football. Absolutely. Get him conditioned. Absolutely. Gives him a chance to play every position yep. imaginable. Okay, and the referee has signaled first down. It was close there, but they gave Bakewell the first down. It's right at the 25. Nose of the ball directly on the 25-yard line where number 72, Jimmy Saracusa, who plays defensive tackle on the other end, will snap it to his quarterback. Snap to about quarter, hands off to Bakewell again. This time the Eagles stop for a very minimal gain, maybe a gain of one. J.J. Cofield, number 93, led the way for the Eagles on that tackle. Second down by number 93, J.J. Cofield. Second down, eight to go. Francisco Balcorda makes his way over to Coach Aaron Williams to get the play and returns to the huddle to share what he's got with his teammates. Eagles defense is already in position. Cornerbacks Michael Averbeck and Peyton Langley split out wide with Green and Weiser. Bakewell in the backfield with Balcorda. Bakewell's on the carry, and another great tackle by the Eagles' defensive line. That was actually Sammy Flores actually on the outside there. 
going to be another minimal gain and bring up third and medium here. And it's third down. Knights have been patient offensively, have not tried to force things, and that's resulted in a clean game for them so far with no turnovers. Teachers are way over here. All right, it's going to be third and about seven, maybe six. Knights snap it on their own 28 here. Valcorta and Bakewell in the backfield. Valcorta's going to throw this time. And he's got Justin Green and he hits him. Nice play by Justin Green. He breaks Peyton Langley's tackle and he's off to the races. Michael Averback prevents the touchdown, but not after Justin Green gains about 40 on the play. Huge play there for the Knights, Tiffany. Yeah, Justin Green might have just changed the dynamic of this whole first half of this football match. That was absolutely astonishing to see that 40-yard carry. This little bubble screen out to the right side. It looked like the Eagles had a tackler who had a chance to make the play, but he was unable to make it, and Justin Green was off to the races. Looks like the ball is going to be spot spotted right at about the 15-yard line. Knights are into the red zone for the second time tonight. Balcorda and Bakewell in the backfield. Tough snap, but Balcorda feels it. Bakewell gets the handoff, and he's got positive yardage. The Knights have found something here offensively. Looks to be a gain of five. It'll be second and five from the 10-yard line. Huge opportunity for the Knights to respond after the Eagles have rolled off 14 unanswered. We've got two backs in the backfield. Number 14, Abraham, Abraham excuse me, Lamaro, Noah Bakewell, and quarterback Francisco Balcorda. That handoff goes to Lamaro, and he's taken down no gain on the play, maybe a loss of one. It's going to be third down for the Knights. Looks like third and six upcoming for the Knights. The Knights were able to beat the Eagles with the bubble pass on third and medium last time. We'll see what they come up with here. Double backs. Francisco Balcorda ready to receive the snap. Balcorda's gonna pitch it. Justin Green, beautifully designed play. Justin Green brings it right to the goal line, and it looks like we've got a horse collar on the play as well. Really nice play design there from Coach Aaron Williams and the Desert Christian Knights. It is a horse collar on the Eagles. It's going to be half the distance to the goal, but there's not much to go there as the ball's already at the one yard line. So it's gonna be first and goal from the one yard line, inside the one yard line. And Tiffany, Justin Green continues to make plays for the Desert Knights. Justin Green is on a roll. If I was head coach of Desert Christian, I might keep calling these plays and toss the ball to Justin Green. We may see number 18's number called again here. Yeah. Won't be surprised. Could be Bakewell as well. He's been heavily involved all night. Balcorda's gonna go under center for one of the first times all night. He's gonna keep it. Balcorda on the QB snake sneak punches it in. Desert Christian saw no need to get fancy there. QB Francisco Balcorda got under center and just punched it in for this touchdown. That's 14 to 13 with 6.04 to play. Knights have a chance to tie it up here with the extra point. Seen a lot of resilience from both ball clubs early in this one. It'll be number 85, CJ Tuning. Tuning's kick is good. That'll bring our score to 14 to 14. Knights and Eagles are tied, squared at 14, with 6.04 to play in the second quarter. Six and four seconds left here in the first half. Fans, don't forget about the concession stand, bacon, cheeseburgers, all beef, premium hot dogs, nachos and cheese, cotton candy. Eric, in the first half, it seems like Lancaster Baptist was playing strong both offensively and defensively on the ball. Now, in the second quarter, it looks like the Knights are starting to wake up offensively. Absolutely. Absolutely. This game has been back and forth, back and forth. The Knights punched it in first, got a 7-0 lead following an Eagles turnover. Eagles then respond with a long drive, a two-point conversion, 
a stop and another score to make it 14 to seven. You think the Eagles have a lot of momentum? You think the Eagles could pull away? Not the case. The Knights tie it up at 14 all halfway through the second quarter. It'll be CJ Tuning who's done a great job all night as the specialist for the Desert Christian Knights. He'll be kicking off to number 20, Samuel Flores, and number seven, Marcos de Polarosa. Tuning's kick is in the air, and it's a good one. It is returnable. De Polarosa catches it, and he's on the move. De Polarosa around the right side picks up a decent block. He's still on his feet. Not for long, though. Steven Weiser brings down Marcos de Polarosa. He brings it out right near the 20 yard line. Maybe the 19 is where the Eagles will take over. A great crowd here at Tony Brown Memorial Field. Both stands, both sides, a lot of energy, a lot of folks enjoying the game. A perfect night, 70 degrees. Let's see what happens here. Langley in the backfield, joined by DePaul Rosa. Langley fakes it. He's going to throw for one of the first times tonight. He puts it up for Ethan Cox. And a great play by James Henderson. Number one, James Henderson breaks that up. Langley was under pressure, found a way to get it off, and it was a pretty good ball, but broken up by number one, James Henderson. So it'll be second and 10 for the Eagles. They're on their own 19 and we've got 5.53 to play in the second quarter. Langley's in shotgun. He's joined by number 20, Sammy Flores. Marcos de Polarosa heads in motion. Snap to Langley. All balls on the ground. A little bit of trouble on the handoff. Langley was giving it to Flores. It was not a clean exchange, and Langley had to fall on it in the backfield. So once again, the Eagles facing some adversity tonight. It'll be third and about 13 from the Eagles' own 16-yard line. We'll see what Coach John Alvarez draws up here for the Eagles. Maybe a little trickery here, Tiffany. We'll see. I think it's time for some trickery. We'll see. Okay. Well, for the first time tonight, the Eagles have got several receivers split out wide. Sammy Flores and Austin Yarbrough. Marcos de Rosa is in the slot. No backs in the backfield with Langley. Langley's going to throw. He's got pressure, though. Oh, and it's all. Oh. Coach Alvarez drew up a little middle screen there for Ethan Cox, and if he could have got it, he could have gone a ways, but pressure there forced a tough throw by Langley. It's going to bring up fourth and 13 for the Eagles, and you'd have to think they're going to punt it away here. So a huge defensive stand by the Desert Christian Knights is going to put Ethan Cox in punt formation for the Eagles. Ethan Weiser back with Desert Christian to return the punt. It's a tough snap, but Ethan Cox fields it, and it's kind of a line drive. It's going to bounce a really nice bounce for the Eagles. Ball's going to bounce all the way to the Knights 34 yard line. Tiffany, I don't know if you saw that last Saturday in the in the USC Arizona game, a play that just happened here was very similar. The punt team tried to force the returner to touch the football. I've seen that two weeks in a row, and I still don't know if it's legal, but I haven't seen a flag either week, so I'm going to guess it's okay. Might be a new trend going on. Uh, <laughs> definitely something to monitor this football season. So in what's been a game of runs, we'll see if Desert Christian can continue the run that they're on right now. They led early 7-0. The Eagles responded with 14 straight. The Knights have responded with seven. And now the Knights have a chance to take the lead going into half. It's 4.55 to play. First and 10, Desert Christian. Francisco Balcourt is in the backfield with Noah Bakewell. Bakewell gets the carry. It's not much running room there. A great job by the Eagles defensive line. Several Eagles bring Bakewell down for just a very minimal gain, gain of one on the play. Bakewell's not been able to find much running room around the line of scrimmage tonight. Desert Christian's biggest plays have been through the air. 
Steven Weiser and eight, uh, number five, Steven Weiser and number 18, Justin Green have had some big plays on the outside for the Knights, but they've been patient and methodical. Balcourt is joined in the backfield by Bakewell and Lamoureux. He's going to throw this time. He's got pressure, and he's looking deep. And he overthrows his intended receiver, number five, Stephen Weiser. But it was great coverage on the play by number 20, Sammy Flores. And the Eagles defensive line was bearing down on Balcorda. Did a really nice job just to get the football away there. So we saw the Eagles face a third and long on their last drive. And now we see the Knights with a third and long. 4-0-1 to play. It's going to be about third and 10 maybe third and 11 here for the Knights. We'll see if the Eagles send pressure. Several receivers split out wide by the Knights. Number one, James Henderson. Number five, Steven Weiser. Number 18, Justin Green, who made some huge plays on the last drive. Bakewell's in the backfield for protection for Balcorda. Balcorda's gonna throw. He's gonna roll right again. He's done that a lot tonight, and he's got Justin Green deep. Another huge play to Justin Green. Tiffany, Justin Green is taking over this football game. If Justin Green continues to play the way he is and they continue to connect on that field, Justin Green might be called MVP of this game. That was a, a, a really nice throw by, by Balcorda. I thought he maybe put a little too much on it, but Green ran under. It was good coverage by number 20, Sam Flores, but just a better play by Green. I promise you Justin Green's father is probably so appreciative that this game out of any game is being filmed. Tonight. Absolutely. Green family, I hope you're enjoying. Okay, that's going to up, bring up first and down again. First and 10 from the 15. Balcourt is going to hand it off to Bakewell. Bakewell avoids a tackler in the, ba in the backfield, and he carries a few eagles. He's going to pick up positive yards, gain of at least three on the play. Eagles could have brought in Bakewell down for a loss, but he shifts his way for a gain. And the Knights have a chance to bleed the clock here towards the end of the second quarter and what's been a really competitive football game throughout. Our game of the week this week for the city of Lancaster is not disappointing. All right, it's going to be Balcorda in the backfield, joined by number 42, Noah Bakewell, and number 14, Abraham Lamoureux. Bakewell's on the carry, and he's got a nice hole, but the Eagles fill it quickly. He picks up positive yardage, but not much. It's going to bring up a big third down in this football game, third and five from the 10-yard line. There's two minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the first half. We're all tied at 14. Desert Christian's got a huge third down. They're at the 10-yard line, third and five. We'll see what they go with here. Justin Green's been huge, and he split out right along with Steven Weiser. Green and Weiser have been the biggest playmakers for the Knights all night. And Green's in motion. Oh, Balcorda rolls right. Balcorda throws. Oh, Balcorda had number 85, CJ Tuning, and just put a little too much on it. A great play design by the Knights did not result in points there. We'll see what they go with here. Tuning has kicked it well all night. And early indications are that the Knights will attempt the field goal here to take the lead. Tiffany, they're not going to like seeing that one on film. He had <laughs> tuning wide open there. Wide open. If only was a little bit more diligent with that pass, finding the pocket. He would have been able to see it a lot quicker. But unfortunately, they're going to have to try to get one more point up on the scoreboard, and let's hope that kicker gets that point for them. We'll see what happens here. CJ Tuning lines up for the kick. He's got the distance and the accuracy. Yes. The kick by CJ Tuning, who's been really good all night, gives the Knights a three-point lead with two minutes to play in the first half. You were spotted at the 10, so he probably kicked it. I'd say it was 27. 27 yard field goal attempt by CJ Tuning was good there, and he had plenty of distance. Tiffany, I think that was good from maybe 30, 35 at least. So we'll see if Lancaster Baptist can respond yet again. The Eagles have faced adversity a couple of times tonight. Faced it early on with a turnover and points from the Knights. 
responded with 14 straight of their own. But now the Knights have responded with 10 more of their own. And it's 17-14. Desert Christian leads Lancaster Baptist with 159 left to play in the first half. Our listeners can't hear the music. Our sound guys doing absolutely phenomenal to add to the tension onto this field tonight. Got to give a shout out to the guys in the media tower. Play-by-play -play announcer Justin Engelman and our sound man Chris Roberts doing a great job. CJ Tuning, you've heard that name a lot tonight. It's going to kick off here. Tuning's kicks going to Marcos De Paul Rosa and Sammy Flores. Looks like Flores is going to field it. De Paula Rosa leads out in front with a with a block. Flores around the left side. Flores is driven out of bounds, but not after he picks up good yardage for the Eagles. Handles ice cream is available as well in the concession stand while supplies last. Handles ice cream new to the Antelope Valley. So the Eagles will take over on their own 27-yard line, needing points to get the lead before the half. Desert Christian won tonight's opening toss. They deferred, and so Desert Christian will receive the second-half kickoff. Peyton Langley is in the backfield. He's joined by Marcos De Paul Rosa, who the direct snap to, goes to, but it's a beautiful reverse. Sammy Flores is running, and Sammy Flores is going to score. What a response. What a play call. Coach John Alvarez dialed up a beautiful reverse play to Sammy Flores, and Flores takes it in for six. Eric, that score gap didn't last long whatsoever. What a response. Sammy Flores with the 63-yard touchdown for the Eagles. A beautiful reverse play. The direct snap to Marcos de Rosa, the reverse to Flores, and we'll see if the Eagles attempt the PAT here or if they – oh, it's – it's – it was a tough snap there. It rolled its way back to Sammy Flores, and it looks like the referee okay, signaling him down. down so Tiffany, a part of the Eagles score. game that's been really Our smooth all year, has not been Desert smooth Christian. tonight. Desert Christian's giving a little Let's bit of a push back, but we always love a challenge. A huge factor so far in this ball game has been special teams. Desert Christian has been flawless on the point afters, flawless on their field goals, but the Eagles operation tonight has not looked quite the same. So the quick strike by the Eagles gives the Knights a chance to put it in the end zone before this first half ends. The Eagles lead 20 to 17. The Eagles in all blue with the white helmets, the Knights in white with the black helmets. Eagles lead 20 to 17 with 144 left to play. That scoring drive took just 15 seconds for the Eagles. Eric, all I can say is both of these teams are not going to go down without a fight. This has been a great game, and Ethan Cox is getting ready to kick off to Steven Weiser. We'll see what happens here. Cox's kick could have been returned, but Weiser elects to let it roll into the end zone where the Knights pick up a touchback. Desert Christian has minutes. been patient all night. Methodical, long drives. We'll see if they look to keep that here or if they move to the air with just 144 left to play in the first half. Francisco Balcorda has received the the play from Coach Aaron Williams. He's communicating that to the Knights in the huddle. The Eagles have broke and are ready to go. Cornerback Ethan Cox and Michael Averbecker split wide. Justin Green split to Balcorda's left. Steven Weiser split to Balcorda's right. Noah Bakewell joins him in the backfield. Justin Green's in motion. He's been a huge factor tonight. And Balcorda drops back, and he's looking for, you guessed it, Justin Green, but a huge play 
Michael Averbeck with fantastic coverage on the play. No surprise that Valcorta was looking for number 18, Justin Green, but Michael Averbeck was there to knock it away. Second down, Timmy Go. 139 left to play in the second quarter. It's second and 10 from the 15 yard line. All Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. No teams have called a timeout yet in this first half. It's been a really clean first half, Tiffany. I don't even think we've hardly had a penalty flag. But it has been exhilarating, I have to say. It's been a fast half too without the stoppages. Okay, we'll see Justin Green and Steven Weiser both split left. Valcourt gonna pass again. He rolls right. Oh, this time. This time he had C.J. Tuning again, and it was a better ball, but still a little bit high. It deflected off Tuning's hands and almost into the hands of number 15, Ethan Cox. And it's third down. A huge moment in this football game. Lancaster Baptist has got a chance to get the ball back before halftime. It's third and 10. Knights ball on their own 15 with all three timeouts remaining. This is a huge pivot point in this football game. Valcorta has received the play call from Coach Williams. The Knights are going to split out Steven Weiser to the left, Justin Green, and a actually a looks like a trips formation right with Green, Weiser, and Henderson. Valcorta has no one in the backfield with him. He's going to pass. He's got pressure. Oh, oh! Uh, the route over the middle to James Henderson was just a little bit behind him. It looked like he was going to have enough for the first down. But the incomplete pass brings up fourth and 10 with 1.30 to play. The Knights on their own 15 look to punt it away. So, Tiffany, we've seen two possessions in 29 seconds here. What's been a fast-moving game has slowed down here late in the half. We'll see if specialist C.J. Tuning, who's done a great job kicking the ball all night, can pin the Eagles back here. The punt from Tuning, oh, it's almost blocked, but he gets off a beautiful punt that's going to be returned by Sammy Flores. Flores receives that at his own 35, and he's off to the races. Sammy Flores picks up huge yardage for Sammy the Eagles. Looks like a 25-plus yard return for, for Flores. The Eagles take over in the red zone with 118 left in the first half. All right, we'll see what happens here. Peyton Langley and Sammy Flores in the backfield. Marcos DePaula Rosa on the left side. Eagles with a chance to really take some momentum into the half. DePaula Rosa is in motion left. A Knight goes with him, but Sammy Flores receives the carry. Flores with a minimal gain, but we've got a late penalty flag. Looks like a face mask. We'll see what the referee calls. Eagles immediately called timeout, but they may be able to save that here. No penalty flag on the field. Referee announces no flag. A little bit of confusion on the clock. The, the Eagles field. did signal for timeout, and that's granted here. One minute, three seconds left here in the first half. Our score, Desert Christian 17. Lancaster it's 20 to 7, Lancaster, ba 20 to 17, Lancaster Baptist leads Desert Christian with 103 left to play in the second quarter. Eagles used their first timeout, so still have two to, two to go. It's going to be second and nine coming out of the timeout. We've had a, a really great ball game tonight and a lot of action. Eric, you're not only just a phenomenal commentator, you also hold another role at Lancaster Baptist. Can you explain what that role is? Yeah, Tiffany, I am the principal of Lancaster Baptist School, and uh, we finished our first quarter today, and it, we're off to a great start. Uh, God's been great to us, and we've got a great school year going on so far. I would feel pretty blessed if I knew that my principal at high school was this phenomenal at sports. Well, well, I am the basketball coach as well, Tiffany, so sports is a big deal to me. So just as much as the young men on the field interchange their roles, so do you, Eric. You got it. A lot of these are my guys, a lot of my, my basketball players out here playing as well. How exciting. Okay, we got second and nine with Langley and Flores in the backfield. 
Peyton Langley hands off to Sammy Flores. Flores picks up, looks like at least four, and Coach John Alvarez immediately calls for the timeout. It's going to be third and five, 58 seconds left in the first half, 20 to 17 Eagles. You'd have to think this is four down territory based on how the Eagles kick game has looked so far tonight. So at least two chances here on this on this uh, goal line opportunity for the Eagles. Back to back timeout calls. What do you think the head coaches are discussing with their teams at this moment? Absolutely. I think Coach Alvarez really sees the importance of punching this in here. He knows that Desert Christian gets the second half kickoff. He wants a more than one possession lead going into half, and he's trying to take advantage of his opportunity here. We've seen the Eagles get the Knights with the reverse call a couple of times. And you, you have to wonder if Alvarez is setting the Knights up here. He's ran a couple of handoffs back to back, but we'll see if he goes to the trickery here again on third down. Well, let's get back to the field. Okay, it's going to be third and five from the 10 yard line for the Eagles. The Eagles are going to go under center here. Peyton Langley, Marcos DePaula Rosa at fullback, and Sammy Flores at tailback. It's going to be option. Langley's going to keep it. He's not going to get to the first down. Langley on the carry. And immediately, John Alvarez uses his last timeout. I know we've said this a couple of times tonight, but this is a huge moment in this football game. It's going to be fourth and two. Looks like the ball spotted at right around the seven-yard line. 53 seconds remaining. Lancaster Baptist has the opportunity to go up two scores here. Desert Christian, who receives the second half kickoff, can keep it to one score and have a chance to take the lead right out of the half. This is a big moment. And I can't help to think that Coach Alvarez is continuing to take these timeouts because he's shocked by the performance of the Knights tonight. Absolutely. Coming in with a record of a 5-1 to one and Desert Christian 2-4, to four, probably didn't expect this much pressure on them. I, I think you're right, Tiffany. The Eagles have been playing really well. They come into this game 5-1, and one, a huge win last week on homecoming. The Knights have been struggling a little bit, gaining some momentum, two and four on the season. This is a huge opportunity for Desert Christian tonight. They're three points down. This moment right here, fourth and two, will go a long way in determining this football game. So Peyton Langley's in the backfield, no backs with him, shotgun. Langley's going to roll to his right, and he's got heavy pressure. Langley throws, oh, and is caught. Ethan Cox. Did he Langley's pick up the first? Is complete. Ethan Cox on the what a play by Peyton Good Langley. First down. Peyton Langley in the face of two defenders found Ethan Cox and gained enough for the first down. Eagles are out of timeout, so the clock will roll. Wow, I thought Langley was going to be sacked in the backfield for a huge loss. He found a way to get that ball off, and he's going under center for the QB sneak. It looks like he slipped. They're calling him short, and the Eagles are out of timeouts. This is going to be a tricky situation. There's 35 seconds left, and it's running. Eagles are out of timeouts. They're going to go under center again. They're going to sneak it to Langley again. Does he have enough? He does not. It is third down, 20 seconds, no timeouts remaining. Eagles have to get a playoff. What a moment in this football game. Wow, a little bit of disagreement amongst the Eagles. Peyton Langley had to spike it there. What a sequence of events. Tiffany, they went under center, tried to QB sneak it two times in a row with no timeouts and didn't have enough. So Langley makes the smart play. He spikes it so they could get one more playoff before the half here. But that's going to bring up another huge fourth down in this football game. It's fourth and goal from the one-yard line. 12 seconds left in the half. Langley and Flores in the backfield. We'll see what happens here. It's a direct snap to Sammy Flores, and he's going to... Die for the pylon, and it's Sammy in! Flores. Sammy Flores! What a sequence! 
With only 12 seconds left in the second quarter, Sammy Flores is back on fire and getting those points on the board for his team. So the Eagles abandoned the QB sneak strategy. They snap it directly to Flores and shotgun. He takes off to his left, dives for the goal line, and just gets the ball across to give the Eagles the huge score. The Eagles have abandoned the point after attempt here, and they're lining up just straight up going for two. No more point after attempt after the the struggle so far in this game is 26-17. Langley's going to pass, and he's got Flores. Beautiful Langley ball from complete. Peyton Langley. Langley Two finds Sammy Flores good. to make it 28-17. Lancaster Baptist leads by 11 with seven seconds to left to play in this first half. The last one minute and 59 seconds of this first half have been bonkers. It was 17-14 with 1.59 to play. And since that point, Lancaster Baptist has rolled off 14 unanswered to put the Eagles up 28-17 with seven seconds left to play in this first half. If Lancaster Baptist is on this hot of a roll at the end of the first half, I can only imagine how hot they're going to come in after halftime. You can imagine the emotion at halftime is going to be really positive for Lancaster. Coach Alvarez with some great clock management there at the end of the half. He used all three of those timeouts. A really heads up play by Langley too to spike it there with 12 seconds left. Allowed him to call the play they wanted. Got to that play and score. It's going to be a squib kick from Ethan Cox. It's going to be forced to be returned by Steven Weiser. Weiser takes it around the left side. A beautiful tackle by number 25, Tiago De Paula Rosa. And Tiffany, I know that Tiago's parents are on en route to visit their son in South Carolina. They're watching in the car right now, and they're enjoying that play by Tiago. Well, it's amazing to hear that L28 has done a phenomenal job with making sure parents, even across borders, can make sure they can see their children. Absolutely. I hope you enjoyed that one, De Paula Rosa family. There's enough time for one play here before the half. We'll see if the Knights throw it deep or if they just take a knee. Early indications are they're going to take a knee here and take it into halftime. Just one receiver split left, Steven Weiser. Francisco Balcorda takes the knee, and, and that will end our first half. First half it's Lancaster Baptist 28, Desert Christian 17. Eagles, We've got a great game of the week Enjoy in Lancaster the tonight. Lancaster Eric, what an exhilarating first half. A lot of action. To see the team just continue to go back and forth. What do you think the conversations are going to be in the locker room at this moment? Well, I, I've got to think for Desert Christian, a little bit of disappointment. They weren't able to capitalize. They had a 17-14 lead with 1.59 left in the half. A huge opportunity to have a lot of momentum. And Lancaster flipped the script right there before halftime. Sammy Flores has made some huge plays in this game, including that one right before the half. Lancaster Baptist has not played clean throughout the first half, but they've got to be pleased to be up 11 at halftime. For those of you that are just tuning in, Eric isn't just a phenomenal commentator. He's also the principal of Lancaster Baptist, and he's the basketball coach. That's so right. being a coach yourself, what would you say to these players that are on momentum today? Yeah, I think for, for Lancaster, what I would be telling them is to avoid complacency. You know, you, we've had a game of, of runs. Lancaster rolled off 14, but then Desert Christian rolled off 10, and then Lancaster rolled 14. So it'll be really key here in the second half who can sustain excellence. We've seen brief periods of excellence. We got, by the way, a fun flag football game going on in front of us. This is the Lancaster Baptist Youth Sports League. We've got a lot of, uh, I think we've got fourth through eighth grade out there playing right now. So a lot of fun in front of us. But really, sustained periods of excellence will be key here in the second half. Both teams have had burst, but who can sustain it? And I also see camaraderie that is on this field. Yeah. We're able to have two Christian schools going against each other in the Antelope Valley. There's a different dynamic going on right now. Absolutely. The sportsmanship, the brotherhood, uh, the, the, the love that you've seen amongst teammates. It's been fantastic. A lot of fun to see. And uh, really just a great night in Lancaster, California. As Eric said, we have an awesome flag football league going on right now. It's great to see the kids be able to toss the ball just as much as the high schoolers are. So make sure you guys tune in to the flag football match. Absolutely. And and these are future Eagles. These future kids Eagles. all want to be wearing the Eagle uniform soon. Yeah.
little bit of a fumbled snap there. The snap to John Michael Williams. We've got a double reverse. Oh, ball's on the ground. Ball is dead near the 29 yard line. All right, if you're watching at halftime, we've got the Wolf Pack in gray and the Scorpions in yellow. Coach Mike Haynes leads the Scorpions, or excuse me, the Wolf Pack. Coach Peter Moore leads the Scorpions. Wow, we got a big play for a touchdown. Trey Haynes with a big touchdown. What a play for the Wolf Pack. The Lancaster Baptist fans are enjoying this. No marching band, but this will do. Just a reminder for everyone watching, Lancaster Youth Sports is open to the public. If you've got a student interested in playing flag football or even spring baseball, a great opportunity to participate in a community event. Do you know what the age brackets are for these young football players? I believe these are fifth through eighth grade. So fifth through eighth grade students. Tim Hallisey's on the run here. Tim Hallisey. Tim Hallisey avoids Tim the tacklers. Takes it in for, takes it in for an easy Scorpion touchdown. touchdown. I know we've got people from Scorpion all over the valley listening tonight. The city of Lancaster is teaming up with Kids Corner Preschool to offer a special voucher to eligible families for our preschool program. Enrollment is now open, but act fast as there is only a limited amount of spots available. And Tiffany, you did mention I'm the principal here at Lancaster Baptist. I know that there's about 15 spots left available. So if you're listening and you've got a three through five year old that you'd like to get in preschool, give us a call. There's a great opportunity with the city voucher program through the city of Lancaster here at Kids Corner Preschool. This is just a 10 minute scrimmage here at halftime. I think the score is tied up here. Scorpions and Wolfpack. The scoring from the end of the first half continues right in halftime. A reverse, another double reverse. John Chesani throws it and it's almost intercepted by Eddie Aguirre. Now, it's great to just not see these kids' blood flowing, but their energy, their emotions, it's awesome to see on this field. Tiffany, that play was almost made by Eddie Aguirre. Now, Eddie's playing defensive back tonight, but last week on homecoming, he was Eddie the Eagle. He was in the Eagle mascot costume, I so he's doing it. it all here at Lancaster Baptist. <laughs> That's a handoff to Bryce Caballa. Bryce is shifty. Bryce is on his feet. Look at Bryce go. Look at Bryce go. Bryce Gabala. Wow. Looks like Darren Sproles Bryce out there. Bryce may be the number one recruit for the high school football team. Huh? Speaking of last week, Tiffany, Bryce's sister Sophia was announced as homecoming queen last week. So he's making Sophia proud tonight. Lots of legacy on this field. Absolutely. It's been a, a great last couple of weeks for the Gabala family. John Michael Williams is at quarterback for the Wolf Pack. The lefty rolls, takes off. John Michael Williams on the carry. Avoids. Oh. Small gain for the Wolf Pack there. They're halfway through the halftime youth sports game. Tied up at seven. John Michael Williams is going to roll to his left. He finds, oh, John Chesani, the intended receiver, broken up. Camden Mord on the defense. Third down. Tiffany, I'm getting a lot of texts from people all over the valley turning, tuning in tonight for our game of the week. 
Thank you for tuning in for tonight's game against Lancaster Baptist and Desert Christian. We've got a great crowd in the stands and a great crowd online watching as well. Well, Eric, I have to say, uh, this is your door opener to stardom. You are doing a <laughs> phenomenal job at commentating. You're making it easy, Tiffany. You're making it easy. John Michael Williams throws deep. Incomplete. Williams pass incomplete. Then to go Trey Haynes. Fourth down. All right, we've got a fourth down Wolfpack with an opportunity here to take the lead over the Scorpions. Coach Mord and Coach Haynes doing a tremendous job out there with the boys. Oh, the handoff to Bryce Gabala. Oh, Gabala's taken Gabala's down. It's going to be a turnover on field. downs. Reminder, this is a running clock. Under four minutes to go, a running clock. Tied 1-1. One, one. The turnover Scorpions on downs gives it over to the one. Scorpions. Quarterback Camden Mord. Oh, he fakes it. And takes off. Ward's taken off, and he's got a chance to. Oh, what a tackle by Josh Izagiri. Josh Izagiri on a touchdown saving stop. What a play. Looked like Ward was going to take it to the house. Tiffany, I'm getting some reports of deep fried Oreos at the concession stand, and I am really needing some. Yeah, and I see those barbecue pits <laughs> just smoking up all the smoke. All right, Ward's going to throw here. He keeps it again. Mord's on his feet. Kale Deckman with the touchdown saving tackle. Looks like just over a minute to play here. Snap to Camden Mord. Mord rolls right again. He's throwing deep to Eddie Aguirre. It's caught. Eddie Aguirre. Eddie the Eagle, the Eagle last week, the hero tonight. Eddie Aguirre punches it in for the Scorpions. What a throw by Camden Mord and what a catch and run by Eddie Aguirre. We'll see if the Wolfpack can tie it up with just a few seconds left to play. John Michael Williams drops back to pass, and the lefty rolls to his left. He rolls back to his right. He's looking for any receiver, but there's not many options. Williams pass incomplete for Chesani. John, John Chesani was the intended receiver. We've got some moms here of the players here in front of us giving us some, some help in the commentary. Appreciate John Michael's mom helping us out. Nothing like a good football That's mom. right. The second down pass is incomplete, intended for Josh Izagiri. Trey Haynes on the catch. Trey Haynes is still on his feet. He's taken down by Camden Moore. On the play. Last play of the game right here. We'll see what the Wolfpack do. They got a score to tie it up. Big moment. John Michael Williams receives the snap. He takes, oh, it's a, it's a handoff to Bryce Gabala. We'll see what happens here. Gabala moves back and forth. Gabala is shifty. He's still on his feet. Bryce Gabala, but the Scorpions the bring it down. What an exciting feature here at halftime. The Let's Scorpions the beat the Wolfpack. Wolf How about that? The game within the game. Lancaster Baptist Two Sports, led by Sean Lindley, coached by Peter Moore and Mike Haynes. Great job, young man. You're just joining us. Lancaster Baptist leads Desert Christian 28 to 17. We're live on the campus of Lancaster Baptist School at Tony Brown Memorial Field.
it is a perfect evening for football in the Antelope Valley. Not a whisper of wind. And if you're from the Valley, you know that is rare. Temperature 68 degrees. We've got a fantastic crowd on hand to see the Crosstown rivalry matchup between Lancaster Baptist and Desert Christian. The Knights are returning to the field, getting ready for the second half of action. They're led by coach Aaron Williams. Desert Christian going through their halftime stretching routine. Lancaster Baptist is headed to the field as well. Just a couple minutes left here to warm up before the second half of action. Just a reminder if you're tuning in tonight, the city of Lancaster is teaming up with Kids Corner Preschool to offer a special voucher to eligible families for our preschool program. Enrollment is now open, but act fast as there is only a limited amount of spots available. Free vouchers that cover the cost of tuition in the Kids Corner Preschool program are available for qualifying single parent households. My man Joe is joining me here in the booth. He's done a great job all day. So I was going to grab this yes, mic here. There you go. Shout out. We've got folks listening all over the country tonight. Folks in North Carolina, folks in South Carolina, from coast to coast. They're tuned in for the game of the week in Lancaster, California. While we wait for the second half kickoff, We've got a great slate of college football. Tomorrow, game day will be live to see the Washington Huskies host the Oregon Ducks. Number one, Georgia will play Vanderbilt at 9 a.m. local time tomorrow. Arkansas takes on Alabama. We'll see if the Crimson Tide can continue to roll after their early season loss to Texas. Ohio State faces Purdue. Indiana faces Michigan. The Jayhawks of Kansas will play the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Texas A&M will, will face Sarah Anderson's Tennessee Vols tomorrow. The Louisville Cardinals take on the Pittsburgh Panthers. Arizona Wildcats take on Washington State. An SEC rivalry with Auburn versus LSU. Jeff Crockett's Missouri Tigers take on Mark Lee's Kentucky Wildcats. The local teams, the USC Trojans, face number 21 Notre Dame, who looks to respond from two early season losses. It, I can't even call it a rivalry yet because we've always been on the losing side. So it was just really to try to just maintain, be who we are, you know, try to keep it close. We, we came out good, uh, but we just kind of fell apart right there. The last, last drive or so I'd love to have back. But, you know, our, our boys are in it. We're getting the ball second half, and, and we'll see how it goes. In my opinion, there's been great back and forth in the first half of the game. What was the discussion during halftime that's going to make you pick back up in the second half of this game? Well, you know, I think some of it is conditioning. You know, when you talk about eight-man football, a lot of these guys are going both ways. And so it's going to come down to conditioning. It's going to come down to the trenches, the D-line, the O-line, you know, what gives, what doesn't give. And so, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. Whatever wheel comes off first, I hope it's theirs and not ours. Any specific player that you're giving more attention to in the second half? Uh, it's, it's always been 20. You know, uh, since we came in, he's, he's dynamite. He's a firecracker. So we're going to keep an eye on him. Thank you, Coach. Best of luck. Thank you. Oh! Hope you enjoyed that halftime interview. Tiffany caught up with Coach Aaron Williams.
folks, I wish you were here in the booth with me. The athletic director of Lancaster Baptist School and the biggest Buckeye of them all, Justin Engelman, has brought some deep fried Oreos into the booth for the second half. Hope you'll have some at home with us. Great halftime work from Tiffany there. Media man of the year, Chris Roberts, just hooked me up with a cold Dr. Pepper. Shout out to the Lancaster Baptist basketball team running the concession stand tonight. They're dealing with a huge crowd and making great work of it. Booster Club president Tom Higgins has fixed up some fantastic food for the folks on hand tonight at Lancaster Baptist. We're ready for second half football. It's 28-17. Desert Christian trails by 11, but they'll receive the second half kickoff. Ethan Cox will kick it off. Number five, Steven Weiser is deep to return. Cox's kick is out of bounds. So some early opportunities for field position as Desert Christian will take over. Cox has been really good on kickoffs all night, but that one sailed left on him. Welcome back to the second half of tonight's game. Eagle 28, Knight 17. So with the kick out of bounds, no clock, no time moves off the clock. And with 12 minutes to play here in the third quarter, Desert Christian will take over on the 25-yard line. Looks like a notable substitution for the Eagles to start the second half. Marcos Ortiz inserted on the defensive line. Marcos' first year of football and an opportunity to make a big play here. Isaiah Kalika, Austin Yarbrough, and Emilio Patterson on the line for the Eagles. In the backfield for the Knights, we've once again got number three, Francisco Balcorta. He hands it off to number 42, Noah Bakewell, and the Eagles stuff him for a short gain. It's a gain of one. The Knights have given it to Bakewell often tonight, and rarely has he been taken down for a loss. But the big play is not broken out, but that's okay. The Knights have been patient and methodical. So it'll be second and nine. Francisco Balcorda in the backfield with number 42, Noah Bakewell. Justin Green has been a star of the first half for Desert Christian. We'll see how they look to get him involved here in the second. Balcorda's going to fake the hand off the reverse and give it to Bakewell again. And there he goes again. Noah Bakewell just picks up yards. That's a gain of five, and we'll bring up third and four. A couple of times tonight, the Knights have gotten the Eagles in the air on third downs. A bubble screen early, a deep ball late in the second half. We'll see if they target number 18, Justin Green, again here. Thanks for hanging in with us through some technical difficulties early on tonight, folks. It's third and four, Balcorda. Oh, what a play. Steven Weiser on the little pitch pass. And that's going to be good for a Desert Christian first down. Beautiful design there by Coach Aaron Williams. Just kind of pitched it forward, picked up the first down. Steven Weiser, who picked up the touchdown on the first drive for the Knights tonight. So once again, Desert Christian methodically moving the football here. They've got it close to midfield. They're on their own 38. 10.30 to play here in the third quarter. Center number 72, Jimmy Syracuse has done a great job all night for the Knights. His snap goes to Balcorta. He hands it off to Bakewell. And for one of the rare times tonight, Bakewell is going to be taken down for a small loss on the play. Eagles defense line, Marcos Ortiz in there, did a great job of forcing penetration. So it's going to be, they're actually going to spot it right at the original line of scrimmage. So second and ten. Daddy! 
and Francisco Balcorda has received the play from Coach Aaron Williams. Knights have, have had a game plan and stuck with it all night. They've been methodical. They've taken what the defense has given them, and that's led to some success for Desert Christian. We'll see if they look for Justin Green here. He's in the slot with Steven Weiser split wide. Balcorda and Bakewell in the backfield. Oh, the snap is high, and it's loose. Emilio Patterson recovers the football. Eagles ball on the Knights 25. We just commented on how good Jimmy Saracusa has been tonight, but that one was just a little bit high, and Balcorda couldn't bring it in. Emilio Patterson, with immediate pressure, recovers it. Emilio, the sophomore, has steadily been picking up playing time all season and has become a huge factor for this football team over the last few weeks. He'll stay in the game on offense. Peyton Langley and Sammy Flores are in the backfield. Both look to receive the snap. It's a direct snap to Flores with the reverse to the boy who just picked up the fumble. It's Emilio Patterson doing it all. First down for Emilio Patterson on the reverse. And I called him a boy, but he's a man out here tonight. Emilio Patterson with his best game by far in an Eagles uniform. There's 9.20 to play here in the first half. The Eagles are looking to take control of this ball game. It's going to be Eagles first and 10 on the Knights 12 yard line. Peyton Langley takes the snap, he keeps it. Oh, oh! Langley picks up positive yardage, almost slipped his way into the end zone. It's gonna bring it down to around the five yard line, maybe the six. Our angle here in the booth's a little tough down there on the red zone near the goal line. <laughs> Tiffany's joined us on the sideline for the second half. She's gonna be bringing some great commentary from the field, especially when we get to timeouts here in a minute. So it's gonna be second, still can pick up the first down barely for the Eagles. Looks like they're at the five yard line. We've got Flores and Langley in the backfield. It's a direct snap to Sammy Flores. He bounces it wide, avoids the tackler, and he's taken down inside the five. Sammy Flores on the carry. Several Desert Christian, Christian Knights bring down Flores. Looks like James Henderson was maybe leading the way. Half a yard on the play brings us to third down and short to go. It is third and really short here. Looks like the ball spotted between the three and the four yard line. See if the Eagles go back to the QB sneak here. It was really effective for them at times, but also led to a little bit of trouble there at the end of the first half. No, they're not. Langley's in shotgun. Oh, the ball's loose. Emilio Patterson oh, jumps on the football. Emilio, who recovered the fumble defensively a moment ago, recovers the offensive fumble and keeps the drive alive, but brings up another fourth and short on the goal line for Lancaster Baptist. Coach Alvarez has dialed up some really nice play calls for the Eagles in this one. We'll see what he goes to here with the young quarterback Langley making just his third start as the QB. Brother Wyatt watching on and cheering on the sidelines. They're going back under, under center. Looks like the QB sneak. Oh my goodness, what a play. Langley fakes the sneak, pitches it to Flores, and John Alvarez dialed up a beauty on the goal line. Everyone at Tony Brown Memorial Field thought that was a QB sneak to Peyton Langley. And the next thing you knew, Sammy Flores squirted around the left side for a touchdown. Beautiful call by John Alvarez. And the Eagles will go for two with a chance to make it 36 to 17. Langley in shotgun. Flores in motion. Snap to Langley, throws to Flores. Oh, good ball, but Langley, but just a little bit out in front. Flores unable to reel it in, 
and the two-point conversion is no good. So Lancaster Baptist trailed 17 to 14 with 159 left in the second quarter. Since that point, over the last seven minutes or so, the Eagles are on a 20 to zero scoring run. It's 34 to 17, 655 left to play. Lancaster Baptist in the all blue with white helmets leads crosstown rival Desert Christian in the white with black helmets in a great football game on a beautiful night in Lancaster, California. Tiffany's working on some updates on the sideline. Ethan Cox will kick it off for Lancaster Baptist. Steven Weiser is deep. See where this ball goes. Cox has got a good one this time. That ball is going to find its way to the end zone for the touchback. Lan Lancaster Baptist. On a big run here, we'll see if Desert Christian can respond. They'll take over here on their own 15-yard line. All right, folks, they brought me some deep-fried Oreos here in the booth. i got to tell you how these taste. Wow. I'm told the eighth graders at Lancaster Baptist School prepared these deep fried Oreos and they did not disappoint. Okay, Balcorda drops back to pass, but this time he throws it short to Bakewell. He checked it down, and Noah Bakewell was able to, well, not really pick up much there. Looks like it's just back to the original line of scrimmage. So it's going to bring up second and 10 from the 15. Shout out to Jeremy Black tuning in from King, North Carolina tonight. We've got folks listening all over the country. Okay, interesting formation from Desert Christian. They've got three split right, and the lone split left is receiver Steven Weiser. We'll see what Balcorda does here on this big second down. He's going he's gonna to roll left. He's flustered by Langley, but he takes off. Balcorda's going to easily pick up the first down and more. He's driven out of bounds by number 15, Ethan Cox. By far, Balcorda's biggest play on the ground all day. He's rolled right most of the night. This time he rolls left, avoids Langley, and he picks up a huge gain for Desert Christian. That ball is going to advance past midfield all the way down to the Lancaster Baptist 32-yard line. And just like that, Desert Christian is back in business. We've seen this formation a couple of times tonight with Abraham Lam Lamoureux and Noah Bakewell in the backfield. Bakewell's going to take the carry here. He's going to avoid one tackler. Looks like he picks up about two on the play. Second and eight for Desert Christian coming up. Both lines have done a really good job all night. It's been a great physical matchup on the line of scrimmage. Okay, we've got second and eight. It looks like they're going to continue with that. Oh, what actually double backs here, a back on both sides of Balcorda. Five men on the line. Balcorda receives the snap. He's got receivers. He's going to roll left again. He's throwing deep. This is Justin Green. He's made big plays all night. Oh, and it slips through the grasp of Justin Green. Great coverage again by number five, Michael Averbeck. 
Averbeck deflected a pass in the second quarter. This time he wasn't able to get his hands on it. It actually got to Green, but just slipped through the grasp of Justin Green. A really nice ball there by Francisco Balcorda and a barely missed opportunity for the Knights. So that's going to bring up third and eight. The ball spotted at the Lancaster Baptist 30. You'd think the Knights are in four down territory here. They split the huddle, late substitution. Really late substitution, no penalty flags though. So we're gonna see two men split left. Steven Weiser split right, Noah Bakewell to the right of the QB. Valcorda drops back to pass and he's throwing. It's picked off! Ethan Cox, the kicker, punter, do it all for the Lancaster Baptist Eagles. Picks it off. Valcorda had several uh, Knights crossing in the middle of the field and Cox just slipped in front of all of them to pick it off. Ethan Cox makes a huge play to continue the role of momentum for Lancaster Baptist. In a game that Desert Christian led by three late in the second quarter, Lancaster Baptist has a chance to really break open here in the third. Turnovers have really plagued the Knights here to start this third quarter. A fumble lost and now the interception. Peyton Langley's gonna go under center with Emilio Patterson in the fullback. Sammy Flores in the backfield. It's a pitch to Flores and he's got some space. He's got one-on-one -on -one with Weiser. Really nice tackle by Steven Weiser. Drives him out of bounds but not after Sammy Flores picks up about eight on the play. They're gonna, they're gonna give Flores seven there. It's gonna bring up second and three. And John Alvarez has got a chance to go on a long drive here and really begin to put this game out of reach if they can punch it in the end zone. The Eagles line's done a great job all night. Michael Averbeck, number five, playing defensive back and center, a rare combination in football. Under center, Peyton Langley receives it. He's, he bumps into Emilio Patterson. It looks like Patterson was a little confused maybe on the, the play call there, and he kind of brought down Langley. It was a small gain. So it's going to bring up third and really short here for the Eagles. It's going to be third and one. Once again, Langley receives the play call from Coach John Alvarez, and we'll see what the Eagles do here. The Eagles go with this formation where they look to have two in the backfield, and it's Sammy Flores again, and he's gone! Sammy Flores around the left end to the house. 50-yard touchdown. Not one, not two, but three TDs on the night for Sammy Flores. Takes our score, Eagles 40, Desert Christian 17. Three minutes, 52 seconds left here in the third quarter. That one could be a backbreaker. The Eagles take a 40 to 17 lead. The Eagles once trailed by three late in the first half. Since that point, they've been unstoppable. The Eagles will line up for two again. Once again, the, the PAT exchange has been troublesome at times for the Eagles tonight. That's a little pass. Peyton Langley, what a beautiful ball. Hits Austin Yarbrough in the back of the end zone for the two-point conversion. Folks, that's 28 unanswered by Lancaster Baptist to make it 42-17. Langley Flores on top of the bleachers, pumping up the crowd, and the Eagles fans are loving it. The home crowd is eating it up. The students and fans of Lancaster Baptist are loving what they're seeing. This game has completely changed. Turnovers will do that in football, folks. So it'll be Ethan Cox looking to kick off. 
Cox again will be kicking to Steven Weiser. We've heard those names a lot tonight. Cox's kick is in the air. It's a low liner that'll be returned by Steven Weiser. He picks it up, picks it up at the five, and he's on his way. Great tackle by the Eagles, a host of Eagles there. Marcos De Paula Rosa led the way. Emilio Patterson joined in there, and Tiago De Paula Rosa. The De Paula Rosa brothers combined for that tackle there. So we'll see if Desert Christian continues the methodical drives, or if they look to go up-tempo here, needing to put some points on the board in a hurry. It does look like they're going to go to the air here. We've got four split out. We've got Henderson, Lamoureux, Weiser, and Green all split out. We're going to see a timeout on the field. Timeout on the field. Looks like Desert Christian calls the timeout. We're going to kick it to Tiffany. Tiffany's got a report for us live on the field. One dollar shout out still available. We'll shout to Coach Dakota. We love you and we are proud of you from mom and dad. Hang with us. We're going to kick it to Tiffany. Tiffany? Desert Christian football players, your fans love you and are proud of each of you. Desert Christian cheerleaders, your fans love you and are so proud of each and every one of you. One dollar shout outs available at the concession stand. Making sure that the points stay on the board for Lancaster Baptist High School. Lancaster Baptist High School is up to a lead 42 to 17 to Desert Christian. Hopefully Desert Christian Knights pull through for the rest of the third quarter and really push back uh, with their defense. Perfect. Thanks, Tiffany. Great report. It's first and 10 on the 15. Knights have three receivers split out. Valcourt's passed is thrown to number 85, CJ Chewing. Really good ball there and great grab by Chewing. He's driven out of bounds by Marcos de Paula Rosa, close to the first down. Looks to be a gain of eight on the play. Be second and two for the Knights. We've got some Eagles fans listening tonight. Yes, Lancaster Baptist Eagles fans, but some Philadelphia Eagles fans. Go Birds! Okay, Balcorda's empty backfield again. Motion is Justin Green. He's been the biggest playmaker of the night for the Knights. Balcorda rolls right. He loves to do that, and this time he's going to take off again. He's done that a couple of times this quarter very successfully. That's going to be a first down. Michael Averbeck drives him out of bounds. Some of the biggest plays of the night have happened when Balcorda got outside the, pa the pocket. Eagle pass rushers have been in there a lot tonight, but they're not staying in their lanes. That's giving Balcorda an opportunity to roll. And he picks up the first down there. So we've seen him roll left for a big gain here in the third quarter, roll right there. Balcorda using his legs could be a big factor here the rest of the way for the Knights. We've got 2.25 left to play in the third quarter. The Eagles are on a 28-0 run here, but the Knights are driving with a chance to get back in this one. It's 42-17. Thanks for tuning in tonight at Tony Brown Memorial Field on the campus of Lancaster Baptist School for the game of the week. There he goes again. Balcorda rolls right and once again picks up positive yardage for the Knights. You'd have to think that this is being called from the sideline. They're seeing what can happen when Balcorda gets outside the pocket and can pick up yardage. We'll see if the Eagles make an adjustment. Balcorda looks a little, a little hampered, but he's going to stay in the football game, playing through a little bit of soreness, maybe some injury. It's going to be second and two. Knights sideline. Knight's sideline is getting into this, looking for a comeback. There he is, Noah Bakewell. Oh, ball's on the ground. Justin Green, he's been Mr. Clutch all night, picks it up. 
Looks like they're spotting him just short of the first down. It's gonna be third and very short here. We've got a shout out to one of our biggest fans, Hallie Dow, watching in Washington right now. Go Eagles, Hallie. Okay, third and very short. Ball's just past midfield. Empty backfield. Beautiful play call there by the Knights. They get it to their playmaker, number 18, Justin Green. Great decision by Balcorda. Great call from the sidelines, and the Knights pick up the first down. Reception, good play, Taylor Christian. First down. This may be the last play of the first half. There's 28 seconds remaining in the, th uh, excuse me, of the third quarter. <laughs> last play potentially of the third quarter. 28 seconds left in the third. It's 42-17. Valcourter, he's gonna direct snap, keep it this time. Really good job by the Eagles D-line. JJ Cofield, Isaiah Kalika, Marcos DePaul Rosa, and Ethan Cox all combined for the tackle. And that does look like it's gonna bring us to the end of the third. Second down. Nine to go. Knights won't get another playoff here. So that's going to bring us to the end of three. And we've had a good one all night, but the Eagles are taking control. It's 42-17. Lancaster Baptist leads Desert Christian. We're going to kick it back to Tiffany again. Tiffany, what you've got? update there as we start the fourth the eagle defense is sprinting out to their positions they're fired up they're ready to go they're ready for this fourth quarter people are excited the stands are alive a great night of football here in lancaster california it's going to be second and nine for the eagles second and nine excuse me second and nine for the knights knights are in eagle territory Knights have it just inside the Eagle 30 here at the start of the fourth quarter. It's been successful, so why abandon it? Balcourt is going to stay with the empty backfield. Trips left. Wiser to his right. He rolls right, but this time the Eagles keep their passing lanes, but Balcourt takes it up the middle. He still picks up positive yardage. DePaula Rosa slings down Balcourt. A little bit of an awkward Balcourt tackle there as he brought him down kind of by the arm. Valcourt is tough, though. He's going to stay in this football game. It's going to bring up third and five. A big third down for the Knights. It's third and five. They're going to keep with the empty backfield, and you can't blame them for that. They've got three split left, and, of course, Justin Green leads the way there in the slot. Steven Weiser split out right. Balcourt's pass. Oh, he had Weiser, but the pressure forced him to let go of it early, and it results in an incomplete pass. It was Marcos de Paula Rosa bringing the pressure there, and that's going to force fourth down. Well, this one could put it away for the Eagles. The Knights must pick up this fourth down to stay in this football game. It's 42-17 with 10.59 left in the fourth. Valcourt has been tough all second half.
got to avoid the turnover here and need to pick up five to keep the drive alive. Once again, it's an empty backfield with just Balcorda. Three split left, wiser split right. He fakes the bubble to green. He throws deep. It is, oh, it's intended for Andrew Silva and just off his hands, Eagles take over. Lancaster Baptist takes over. Gutsy effort by Balcorda. He found number seven, Andrew Silva, just a little bit too tall. So you'd, you'd have to think that Lancaster Baptist is going to keep it on the ground here. They're going to take over at their own 26-yard line. Snap is low, but Peyton Langley fields it. He spins in the backfield. Great penetration, though, from Desert Christian. It's going to result in a loss of two for Langley on the play. Langley on the carry, loss of two yards on the play. Second down and 12 to go. Hearing from a lot of folks in the Valley tuning in tonight, we want to invite everybody to One Night 180, Saturday, October 21st at 5 p.m., a one-night youth event for 7th through 12th graders, free few music, giveaways, a great Bible message. Everybody in the Valley is invited out for One Night 180. Okay, the Eagles have three split out, one in the backfield. We'll see if Coach Alvarez goes to the air here on second down. He is. Langley drops back. Langley's got Sammy Flores. Oh, multiple players converge. No one's able to come up with it. Incomplete. So the Eagles face third and long. Interesting play design. Had a chance to go for big there. It looked like a little bit of miscommunication on the routes led to a little bit of confusion on who that ball was intended for. So it'll be third and 11, and we'll see if John Alvarez keeps it in the air here or puts it on the ground. Peyton Langley takes the snap, and he's going to put it in the air. Langley's got a beautiful pocket, throws it up, Oh, it's intercepted. Steven Weiser. Wow, a, a, a fight for the football. A, a true jump ball situation. But the referees are going to signal Weiser had it first. Flores comes away with it. They're going to say Weiser had it first. And the Eagles turn it over as Steven Weiser picks it off. Flores had a step, but Langley had to put a little too much air on it, made it a 50-50 ball, and Weiser made a great play. So with 9.55 left to play, Desert Christian trailing 42-17 to will take over at their own 33-yard line, needing points. James Henderson split right. Steven Weiser and Justin Green split left with Green in the slot. Francisco Balcorda with an empty backfield looks to drive the Knights down the field. Balcorda takes the snap, hangs in the pocket, throws it. He was rushed by Austin Yarbrough, had to get rid of it quicker than he wanted to. It was intended for James Henderson, but unable to connect. Great pressure there by Austin Yarbrough around the outside. A lot of Eagles have gotten in on the action tonight. J.J. Cofield and Marcos Ortiz with some big plays on the defensive line. Austin Yarbrough has been in that backfield a lot tonight. This time, just two split out for the Knights. They've got Bakewell back in the backfield. They'll fake it to Bakewell. Oh, there they are again. It looks like... Austin Yarbrough again. Isaiah Kalika and Isaiah and Austin Yarbrough combined for the sack. 
It's third and 16. The Knights again will go with that trips formation right. Single receiver left, three linemen, one QB. Eagles look to send pressure here. We'll see what happens. Great blocking up front there. That ball was intended for James Henderson. And once again, just outside the reach of Henderson. It's going to bring up fourth and long here with 9.07 left to play. We'll see if the Knights punt it or they keep it. They're going to, looks like they're signaling for the punt. C.J. Tuning has done a great job as the specialist for the Knights all night. We'll see what happens here. Snap to Tuning. Punt is in the air, and it's another good one. It's been good ones all night from C.J. Tuning. A nice bounce for the Knights. Ball is going to roll close to the 15-yard line, down at the 16-yard line of the Eagles. So there's 8.58 here to left to play in the fourth quarter. After a fury of scoring, last few possessions, no scoring as the defenses have held tight. While we have a moment, we want to invite we want to invite all of our community to Friend Day at Lancaster Baptist Church on October the 22nd. Everyone is invited to be our guest for Friend Day on October the 22nd. Okay, Langley's in the backfield. Empty, but he's got Patterson, and this time Flores in motion. A lot of action in the backfield, and Emilio Patterson's got it. It's a positive gain for Patterson. Looks like about a gain of five. It'll bring up second and five for Lancaster Baptist. Patterson on the carry. Gain of three yards on the play. Second down, seven to go. Eagles look to drain this clock here as they go into their four-minute offense mode. This time we're going to have double backs back on both, si on both sides of Langley. Langley's receiving the snap, hands it to Patterson. It's another positive gain just shy of the first down. Should bring up third and short. You'd have to think this is exactly what Coach John Alvarez is wanting to see. Positive gains, bleeding the clock, a chance to melt this one away and send everyone into their evening on this beautiful night in Lancaster, California. We've got a great crowd in the stands and a great crowd at home watching. Thanks for staying with us tonight. Just a perfect night for football in Lancaster, California. Okay, third and short. Direct snap to Flores. Patterson on the reverse. Almost breaks it for a big one, but definitely gets enough for the first down out past the 30. Good for Eagle. And what has been a career game for Emilio Patterson continues. What a night for the sophomore, number 33, seeing a career high in carries, a career high in yards, a career high in tackles, and a fumble recovery. A breakout night for number 33, Emilio Patterson. A kid who has waited for his moment, and he has taken advantage tonight. It'll be first down. Langley and Flores in the backfield. Both looking to receive the snap. It goes to Langley. He hands off to Flores. Flores around the right side. Good blocking allows him to get it out all the way, almost to midfield. Just shy of midfield. He'll be spotted at the 39. Looks like a gain of six. Second and four for the Eagles.
want to give a shout out to the center for the Eagles tonight. Number five, Michael Averbeck is not the usual center for the Eagles, but he's played a phenomenal football game tonight. The pitch goes to Sammy Flores. He's going to pick up the first down, and the chains keep moving. Fantastic blocking out in front by number 93, J.J. Cofield. Carried his blocker well beyond the line of scrimmage. Really created a hole there for Flores. Cofield, another young eagle who has not seen a ton of reps throughout the season, taking advantage of his opportunity tonight. There's six minutes to play. First down, Eagles ball on the Knights 34. Langley in the backfield. He's going to hand it off. Oh, ball is loose. Ball is on the ground. Wow, Emilio Patterson jumps on it again. That's the third time this half that Emilio Patterson has found himself on top of a fumble. Once on defense, twice on offense. Patterson keeping the drive alive for the Eagles there. Not the positive yardage they've seen on the last few first downs, but you'd have to think Coach Alvarez is really pleased with the four-minute offense of the Eagles. They're bleeding this clock away, melting it down with an opportunity to cruise to a victory here after a really close ball game throughout the first half. Langley's in the backfield with Sammy Flores. Marcos de Rosa goes in motion. Langley's going to keep it this time on the QB keeper. He's going to pick up positive yardage, but he's taken down right around the 31-yard line. So the Eagles have a third and seven here. One more first down, and they can almost run it all the way out. I got word we've got some folks watching in Oklahoma. Shout out to the Sooner State tonight for tuning in. Folks from all over the country are with us, live in Lancaster, California. It's midnight on the East Coast, but great football still being played out here in Lancaster, California. Peyton Langley's going to go option here. He's going to keep it, doesn't pitch it, doesn't pick up the first down. It's a minimal gain. It'll be fourth and five. It's just inside the 30. We'll see what Coach Alvarez does here. Too far away for a field goal. Maybe too close for a punt. We'll see if he goes for it here on fourth and medium. Looks like Alvarez will keep the offense on the field. Takes his time giving the play to Langley. Langley makes his way to the huddle. Clock is now inside four minutes. Peyton Langley, empty set, trips right. Peyton Langley, what a ball. Beautiful pass is caught by Ethan Cox. That's going to almost put it away as the Eagles pick up a big fourth down conversion. Makes it first and 10 with 324 to play. First down. Langley maybe saved his best ball of the night for his last ball of the night. That was a beautiful pass. Great route by Ethan Cox. First down Eagles, just three to play. Coach John Alvarez has really got to be pleased with how this team responded after going down 17 to 14. 28 unanswered, and that may be how it ends up. This may be our final score. The Eagles have a chance, though, to add some more points here late. Cougar Sooner. Reverse to Marcos de Polarosa. Really well defended by the Knights. He's driven out of bounds. Very, very minimal gain. He'll bring up second down. One dollar shout out to Gwen Sophia Alvarez. We love you from Grand and Papa. One dollar shout outs available. With a shout out to the basketball team in the concession stand. Great job tonight led by Coach Brian Osborne. And Cecilia Lee. And for Southeastern Park President Tom Huygens. So the first down play went out of bounds. That'll stop the clock and give the Knights a chance to get this ball back one more time. As it's second down with 319 to play, 42-17. Eagles are going to go back under center. 
They've gone to this formation a few times with Langley under center, DePaulo Rosa at fullback. Sammy Flores at tailback. The, the fullback carry goes to Marcos DePaulo Rosa. Great job by Marcos of keeping his feet, picking up positive yardage, getting it inside the 10 yard line for the Eagles. It's going to bring up third and short here. One more first down may just do it for the Eagles. One dollar shout out to AV Press. Mr. John Sanders, thank you for being here tonight from the AV Press, John Sanders. Coach Alvarez gives the play call to Peyton. The sophomore QB making only his third start of his career has done a fantastic job tonight leading the Eagles. He's going to go under center again. Last time they gave it to DePaul Rosa. We'll see what they do here. As DePaul Rosa at fullback. Sammy Floor is at tailback. Peyton Langley under center, letting that clock bleed all the way down. Looks to the sideline, waits for the signal from the coaches. They're going to tell him when to snap it. Here he goes. Snap from Michael Averbeck to Peyton Langley. It's handed off to Sammy Flores, and he's got room. He's going to easily pick up the first, stretch it out towards the goal line, not get there, but first and goal, Lancaster Baptist. A great job by the right side of that offensive line. Isaiah Kalika, Austin Yarbrough creating a great hole there for number 20, Sammy Flores. you're still watching and, and hanging in there with us on this Friday night in Lancaster, thanks for watching all night. Thanks for hanging through some technical difficulties with us. The Eagles lead late here, 42-17. Clock is running. Langley looking to the sideline, letting it melt away. 1.30 to play, first and goal from inside the five. A dominant second half from Lancaster Baptist. All right, the handoff goes to Sammy Flores. He's got one defender to beat, and he does. Sammy Flores, Flores takes it in, in for another Eagles, Eagles touchdown. touchdown. Flores is putting five fingers up. I think that may be five touchdowns on the night for Sammy Flores, one for each finger. What a night for the junior, number 20, Sammy Flores. It's 48-17. Lancaster Baptist leads with 108 to play. We'll see if they go back for the extra point try here or go for two. They've struggled a bit with the PATs tonight. That's, a, that's rare for this team. Marcos DePaulo Rosa is going to be the long snapper here. We'll see if they can execute. The point after try is good. There it is. They struggled early on, but great snap from Marcos de Rosa. Great hold from Sammy Flores, and the PAT is good. Eagles lead 49-17 with 108 to play from Tony Brown Memorial Field. Lancaster Baptist faced adversity tonight. They trailed 7-0. They trailed 17 to 14, but since that moment with 159 left in the second quarter, this football team has reeled off 35 in a row. It's 49 to 17. Athletic sponsor Jessica Averbeck Real Estate, Kyle and Kyle Ranches, Billy Tapia Healthcare. Alvarez, Lots of young players getting an opportunity to come in here at, with a minute to play. Several Eagles making their debut tonight. I see number 89, Max Hollis, number 42, Aiden White, number 12, Matthew Averbeck, number 14, Aaron Orleana, number 25, Tiago de Polarosa, all in on the action. For Desert Christian, we've got number 77, Andrew Wong, number 65, Aiden Martinez as the kick sails into the end zone. Touchback again. Number 24, Caleb Saltwettle. Number 50, Xander Presky. Lots of young men getting in tonight.
with a minute eight left to play. We'll see what Coach Aaron Williams has left in the bag for the Knights. They have fought valiantly tonight. Looks like they'll keep it in the air. They've got four receivers split out. Francisco Balcorda, who has battled all night, has an empty backfield. We'll see if he can find his top target, number 18, Justin Green, again here. He's motioning to Green. Last second communication as the snap comes to Balcorda. It's a low snap, but he fields it. He goes to Green, and Green catches it. Sammy Flores dives for Green, but he's still on his feet. There he is, folks. Justin Green continues his big night, picks up the first down, and gets out of bounds with 59 seconds left to play as the Knights try to get one more score in. Give a shout out to our All Star Team Green, led by Sean Reeder, Cody Anderson. We've got just under a minute to play. Lots of folks headed for the parking lot, but a lot of folks still in their seats. Once again, empty set. Valcorta's got two right, two left. Justin Green in the slot. Steven Wise just split out right, wide left. Valcorta's in the pocket. He's going to he's gonna scramble and he's going to run. He's going to take off on his left side. Emilio Patterson and Marcos Paulo Rosa converge, but he slides out of bounds just inside the 30-yard line. So with getting out of bounds, the Knights stop the clock. 51 seconds left to play. Knights trying to punch it in here before time expires. I think there's a lot to build on tonight if you're a Desert Christian Knight. They've really found something with the connection between Balcorda and Green, between Balcorda and Weiser, some things to build on. They're going to keep empty backfield. Two left, two right. Eagles keeping a lot of their primary defenders still in the game here, showing great respect to the Knights. Valcorda drops back to pass, and he's got a great pocket. He's going to throw deep, and he's got Steven Weiser. It's deflected, almost interception, intercepted again by Ethan Cox. Cox was trying to get his second pick of the night there. It looked for sure like Steven Weiser was going to stroll into the end zone, and out of nowhere, Ethan Cox comes across the middle, almost picks it off. 46 ticks left on the clock. For the first time tonight, we're seeing the flag move a little bit, but it's been a beautiful night with minimal wind, perfect temps. Two split left, two split right. Valcorda drops back to pass, and he throws deep. This time he's got number seven, Andrew Silva, just beyond his fingertips. A really nice route combination there that got Andrew Silva open and just barely unable to connect. Eagles starting to make some subs. Number 22, Jude Atherton, sophomore, has entered the game. Number 85, freshman Gideon Connor has been in on the action the last few plays. Knights are going to keep the same formation. They've got Weiser and Green split left. They've got Silva and Henderson split right. Balcorda with an empty backfield. Takes the snap. Got a nice pocket once again. This time rolls left. He's going to throw deep. This one's intended for Justin Green, and he's got him wide open. Justin Green continues to make a name for himself tonight. This young man has made plays all night. The deep ball from Francisco Balcorda, who threw a beautiful ball. It looked like Flores slipped there. Green had no one around him, and he waltzes in for six. Great fight by the Knights to get back on the scoreboard before the half before the game ends. So it's 49-23 with 31 ticks left. And the man who's kicked it all well all night, C.J. Tuning, has got a chance to add one more for the Knights. The kick by Tuning is, you guessed it, good. C.J. Tuning makes it 49-24. 49-24. Lancaster Baptist leads with 31 ticks left from Tony Brown Memorial Field.
Extra point kick is good. Takes our score, Kevin Creek to 24. It's been a really fun matchup, really great energy, fantastic competitiveness, a really clean football game, folks. You've watched very few flags tonight. It's been a fun night from Tony Brown Memorial Field, and there's just 31 ticks left on the clock. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in from East Coast to West Coast, all around the world watching the Lancaster Baptist Eagles take on the Desert Christian Knights. CJ Tuning gets ready to kick off one final time tonight. He's put it in the end zone almost every time. Sammy Flores is back deep to return. We'll see if he has a chance to return this one. Tuning's kick. Oh, it looks like we could have an onside here. It's an onside kick. And it's, and it's, wow, bounces off an eagle. Austin Yarbrough with the sliding recovery. Great job by Yarbrough to get on top of that one. And that should do it. One more time tonight, I want to remind everyone watching the City of Lancaster is teaming up with Kids Corner Preschool to offer a special voucher to eligible families for our preschool program. Enrollment is now open, but act fast as there is only a limited amount of spots available. Free vouchers that cover the cost of tuition in the Kids Corner Preschool program for qualifying single parent households are still available. Eagles making several subs here. Number 56, Jeremiah Banuelo centering the game. Number 25, Diago De Paulo Rosa at tailback. Number 12, Matthew Averbeck at quarterback. And number 42, Aiden White at wingback. Snap's going to go to Averbeck, and this will probably do it. De Paulo Rosa gets the carry. Tiago's on the move. Tiago's taken down at midfield. It looks like the ball is loose. And recovered. Wow. Thought for sure that one would end it, but the Knights come up with the turnover at midfield and we'll see if Justin Green can make one more play tonight. It's 49-24. And what's been a really gutsy effort from number three, Francisco Balcorda, the QB. Five foot 10, 150 pound junior has played his heart out tonight for Desert Christian. You guessed it folks, two split left, two split right. Green and Weiser left. Silva and Henderson right. We'll see what Balcorda does one final time. He steps up in the pocket. He rolls right. He's on his feet. Balcorda still on his feet. Andrew Oriana and number 65, Alicio Juarez combined for the tackle. That is going to be, oh, we got a timeout. Timeout with three seconds left. Coach Aaron Williams wants to get one more snap off for the Knights see if they can punch it in so that gives me one more opportunity to tell you about one night 180 on October the 21st on the campus of Lancaster Baptist Church and friend day everybody's invited October 22nd that one night 180 events got some awesome giveaways Rams tickets Clippers tickets you don't want to miss it thanks for tuning in all night it's been a beautiful evening in Lancaster, California, shout out to both coaching staffs, both, both schools, both fan bases for turning out and making the game of the week a fantastic atmosphere. So we'll see Francisco Balcorda put it in the air one final time tonight. Split left, you guessed it. Steven Weiser, James, just, excuse me, Justin Green. Got to get that name right. It's been all over the field all night. Andrew Silva split right, and James Henderson split right. Valcourt going to go speak to Weiser. Interesting. Interesting there. Don't see that often. Valcourt is going to receive the snap. A lot of pressure. He's going to throw it over to Weiser. Let's see what happens here. Weiser's going to, oh, my goodness. Steven Weiser. What an Effort. Did he get in? Did he get in? Short of the end zone. Oh my goodness. That Steven Weiser stopped just short of the goal line. A fitting way to end this football game.
competitive, close, and interesting. Tiffany is down on the field. Very soon, you're going to hear from some of the stars of tonight's game. You're going to hear from John Alvarez, coach of the Eagles. I bet she'll be finding number 20, Sam Flores, who got in the end zone not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, but five times tonight for the Eagles. Captains will lead their teams across as both teams shake hands and congratulate each other on a fantastic performance. Tiffany's looking for some Eagles to interview. I can see her getting ready. She's identifying who she's going to speak to, and she's got Sammy Flores. Tiffany's got Sammy Flores live. Here in just a moment, we'll kick it to Tiffany. Sammy's looking forward to speaking to the folks at home. I hope that Mr. and Mrs. Flores are ready to hear from Sammy. George, Danny, hope you're ready to say hello to Sammy on camera here in just a moment. Tiffany's going to find Coach Alvarez. Coaching staff's congratulating each other on a great match. Coordinators, Bill Karras, Jeff Crockett, Jacob Wheatley have done a fantastic job all night. Tiffany's asking Coach Alvarez and Coach Flores to come join her for a quick post-game chat. We'll be tossing it down to her in just a moment. Thanks for sticking with us through some technical difficulties early on tonight, folks. I know we didn't have audio for the first few minutes, but thanks for hanging in, for watching all night. Once again, the final from Tony Brown Memorial Field on the campus of Lancaster Baptist School is Lancaster Baptist, 49, Desert Christian, 24. A fantastic game from start to finish. The Eagles turned it over on their opening possession. That allowed the Knights to take a 7-0 lead quickly as Steven Weiser found the end zone. The Eagles responded with 14 straight of their own, making it 14-7. And then Desert Christian responded back with 10 unanswered to make it 17-14. But this game changed with 1.59 to play in the second quarter when Sammy Flores took a reverse around the left end, took it to the house on a 15-second scoring drive. The Eagles quickly got a stop and had a chance to punch it in right before halftime. A really fascinating sequence of events happened down there on the goal line. If you were watching, you saw the Eagles use all three timeouts. You saw Peyton Langley go under center once, go under center twice. And with the clock ticking on third down, made a great decision to spike the football. Don't forget that. He stopped the clock, went over to the sideline, and John Alvarez called a beautiful play, led to a Samuel Flores touchdown on a short fourth and goal that gave the Eagles a huge momentum swing going into half. It went from 20 to 17 to 28 to 17 at halftime. The Knights were still in the football game. Good first half. Opening drive of the first half, you'll remember that Desert Christian had the football and fumbled it at midfield. That was the Emilio Patterson recovery. That play allowed the Eagles to put it in the end zone, go up 34-17. They really never looked back from there. Several Eagles were involved. Flores leading the way with five touchdowns. Ethan Cox with a big interception in the second half. A lot of playmakers on both sides of the field all night. Can't forget about number 18, Justin Green. He was all over the field offensively for the Knights. Probably almost 200 yards receiving, a couple of touchdowns. Francisco Balcorda fought all night. Really resilient play from the quarterback from Desert Christian. Don't forget about the QB play from number 21, Peyton Langley, as well. The sophomore QB was making only his third start tonight with senior quarterback, his brother, Wyatt Langley, out with injury. And Peyton rose to the occasion in a fantastic way. Played really smart, clean football throughout. Allowed the Eagles to uh, really do what they wanted offensively. A really great long four-minute drive to punch it, put it away. Four-minute plus drive to put it away. We saw some breakout performances from players like number 33, Emilio Patterson. Hasn't seen his number called a lot this year, but he was ready tonight. Don't forget as well the, the offensive line play for the Eagles. Number five, center Michael Averbeck. Mike has not played a lot of center, folks. This is a usual tight end receiver for the Eagles, plays corner defensively. And I don't know all the details that led to him playing center tonight, but a really gutsy, percent, uh, really gutsy effort by number five. 
some young eagles like J.J. Cofield, number 93, Marcos Ortiz, number 77, getting their some of their first meaningful action as an eagle. And you can tell it means a lot to Coach Alvarez, spending time with the team on the field as they gather on a knee. Very soon he'll be joining Tiffany along with star performer of the night, player of the night, Sammy Flores. Look forward to kicking it over to Tiffany. She's live at midfield. She's at the 40-yard line ready to speak to the top performers of the night. Still a lot of folks. This is a fun, fantastic, fun crosstown rivalry, Desert Christian on the west side of Lancaster, Lancaster Baptist here on the east side, 40th East and Lancaster Boulevard. Just a beautiful evening. Folks at the concession stand wrapping it up. Flag is starting to wave a little bit. A little bit of wind. The kids are tossing the ball on the field. Man, we didn't we see a fantastic youth football game at halftime? Wolfpack versus the Scorpions. Scorpions took the 14-7 victory. Lancaster Baptist is going to make their way over to the home crowd. Folks, if you're still watching and you've not seen Lancaster Baptist's end of game ritual as they salute the home crowd, you're going to really enjoy this. A lot of fun here as Coach Alvarez leads the team. They do this after each and every game in front of the home crowd. Take a look and listen. Love to see number eight, Wyatt Langley, captain, senior, leading the team through this organized, fun tradition at Lancaster Baptist. For a decade plus, John Alvarez has led this program. Just tremendous tradition. And the fans come to their feet and give the Eagle players one last big applause. They'll finish in prayer, and then Coach Alvarez and, Co and, and player of the game, Sammy Flores, are going to join Tiffany. Look forward to hearing their post-game thoughts momentarily. You're diehard if you're still with us at this point. Thanks for tuning in. YouTube, Facebook Live, and local channel number 28. Really cool moment here as both teams are going to come together, greet each other, congratulate each other on a fantastic football game. Really clean, as we mentioned. Hardly a penalty flag thrown all night. This brings the Eagles record to 6-1 and one on the year. Knights fall to 2-5. and five. Eagles have playoff aspirations, but they've got a big one next week. If you're in Canoga Park, you know what's coming next week as the Eagles take on Faith Baptist. Another big rivalry matchup. Faith Baptist with a tremendous program, tremendous pedigree. We'll see what happens next week in Canoga Park. Teams are gathered for a final word of prayer. Greeting each other, congratulating each other on a hard-fought game. And we're almost ready. I know I've been saying it for several moments, folks, but Tiffany's ready. We're going to kick it to her here in just a second. She's got number 20, Sammy Flores. He's ready to talk to her. So you're going to find Coach John Alvarez as well. We'll see what they have to say. Both coaches giving each other a final word. All right, I think we've teased you almost long enough as both head coaches head their way. We're going to kick it over to Tiffany. Tiffany's got player of the game, junior, tailback, and cornerback. Number 20, Sammy Flores. And she's
she's got the longtime head coach of the Lancaster Baptist Eagles, John Alvarez. Tiffany, over to you. With head coach of Lancaster Baptist, Coach Alvarez Jr. Good. Coach, first off, congratulations on now being six and one with your record. Can you bring us into that locker room talk during halftime that allowed your boys to stay on momentum for the second half? Well, we just, you know, we knew that we had to get the ball and score. Stop them first of all. They get the ball first. We've got to stop them. We've got to score. And we just really have to keep that on repeat. Just rerun, rerun, rerun. And, uh, the boys came out. You know, they know this is kind of a crosstown rival here. Um, and, you know, we just want to um, you know, keep playing Eagle football to the best of our ability. And, and let's just see where the cards fall saying that the boys came out there's one specifically that showed up and showed out sammy flores he was on fire five touchdowns how can you attest to his gameplay tonight he just plays hard every week and that's what we and we need boys to step up and play just like that but he's uh you know, he's a junior he wants the ball we give him the ball he does something with the ball every time he's got it so uh, you know we're thankful to have him for sure uh, to, to wear our, our uh, color uniform and uh, we're not of Sammy. Sammy, absolutely amazing job tonight. Five touchdowns, 68 yard carry. What is going through your head when these plays are happening? Well, I mean, basically just, uh, they just gotta think my line, you know, they're the ones that create, create what happens at the front line. I just to get me through where I need to go and score. What most people don't know is an eight-man football, you're jumping back and forth on opposite ends of the ball. So there's a lot of conditioning going on. Do you attest that conditioning to your gameplay tonight? Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, our coaches say that we're never going to get a condition by any team. And we, that, really, uh, that really shows in practice that we condition a, a good amount to, uh, for it to transfer into the game so that we, by fourth quarter we won't be tired. Congratulations again, Sammy. Stay humble, stay focused, and enjoy the rest of your high school career. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, glory to God. Everything goes to you. Congratulations. You. Yeah. As Sammy said, it is absolutely phenomenal to be on this field and see that these young men give all glory to God just as Sammy did. This has been a phenomenal game to watch, a crosstown rivalry, and looking forward to seeing you all next week for Friday Night Lights with L28.